time in Norway and first time in Oslo of course. First impressions are good, first impressions are cold. There are literally big mounds of snow that they ploughed up at a side similar to what they did in New York when I was there a few years ago. Right here I'm stood right next to an ice rink which is basically central Oslo I believe. Or is it meant to be a swimming pool? I don't actually know. It's that cold out it would not surprise me if that was meant to be like some sort of body of water that has just frozen over. Anyway, at the moment, don't know where we're going. We're just sort of having a look around. I've only just got here myself. I just landed like an hour ago, and then we got the train down into Central. Wow, this is really interesting because this is meant to be a capital city. This, well, this is a capital city. This is meant to be like the London equivalent to Norway. And instead, if you try and listen, there's nothing. There's barely any people about. I mean, actually, there's less people here than there are people in my own hometown back in the UK. Church bells, that's about the loudest thing I've heard since I've been here in this like half an hour segment so far. There's a few birds because we are next to some water and things like that, but overall it's really quiet and it's quite nice of us to be in a capital city and just have some peace and quiet. It doesn't feel like you're in a really busy rat race city. Um, everything else, I mean, I'm looking at this beautiful body of water right now, and it's very clean. You've got archipelagos as well, which are also part of Norway, just over there, the little, <coughs> little islands, uh, part of Norway, which look nice, and I wish I could go to them, but it takes too long to go to and come back from uh, when there's so much here to see on like the mainland. Uh, I see something over there which is an interesting piece of architecture as well. Just looking around, yeah. I was expecting this to be so much more louder. Okay, it's just really weird trying to look around, trying to find something to do when there's literally nothing happening. Um, there is no one around. There we go. There's no one around, really, but there, there are people around, but it's just very few. How many people can you see on? There's a few actually way in the distance, but still. How many people are like walking beside me right now? Zero. It's just such a weird thing to try and get used to, but there's not really a lot happening. I've been looking around and it honestly just feels like a Sunday in the UK. It just feels like there's nothing happening. Um, nothing seems to be open. Probably is, it just feels like there's nothing open because the lack of people maybe, I don't know. There's cars driving about and stuff, but I need to try and find something to do. <laughs> I've just been walking around and I, well, I've been walking around as like the the piers and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm probably going to have to Google something to do just because uh, I'm finding it hard to actually find something to do here. It feels a bit empty, even though it's full of life. Like if I go to the right bits, vehicles are going past. But it's full of life. It's just I'm probably in the wrong areas maybe. So I did a bit of research into why Oslo is so quiet. It was actually the third most uh, research result when you type into Google, why is Oslo? You know, why is Oslo so quiet? Turns out that Oslo made its town center quiet and pedestrian friendly by sending most traffic through tunnels under the city. The city also levies a traffic discouraging toll on cars as they enter the town which subsidizes public transport. So in other words, they put a heavy price on people who enter the city on a toll road and um, send most of the cars under the city in um, tunnels or just around the city and avoid the center altogether, which is why it's so quiet here, which is why you, you see some cars obviously, but you just don't see many. It still doesn't explain why there's not that many people walking about. Again, there's like a handful of people. There's more people than most towns that I've been to in the UK. 
then that are here, like I can look around, I can see maybe 20 people max at any one time. I don't see, like, if, you, if, if this was London right now, it would be heaving, it would be everyone everywhere. But here's actually just completely different. Okay, I think I've found the centre and found where everyone's been at. All around here, there's a lot more people. Even got like a clock tower just behind this tree. Some sort of clock tower. They have a very similar thing in Stockholm in their very like city centre area as well. There's a lot more people around here, so that is that is why wherever I was before it was so quiet because everyone's here. Okay, if you like your statues, I think Norway or at least also would be your place to come. Somewhere back there is a tiger, there's a hammer statue. I've seen about 50 different statues at this point, being here for about a couple of hours. Okay, so right over there is a big ramp that leads up and there's like a little observatory deck just there which people seem to be going at. Um, I don't know if you can see from here, there's quite a few people right up there. I'm interested, let's go check it out. Check out that building, that's really interesting. Okay, there seems to be an opera or ballet house or something. I made it almost to the top. Top is actually that bit there. It's almost the same level, it's just a little bit more steep. And you can't see, but it's... I mean, it's pretty steep. You get to have a nice view of all around here. We walk over to the edge. That's quite a drop right there if you were to fall off. It's pretty high so you shouldn't fall off, but it's quite a drop. It's quite a high way to climb to be honest. But it looks pretty cool. I mean, it's contemporary buildings. It's just different, you know. It looks like there's braille or something on the end, like edge of this building. Maybe that's just a design. I don't know braille, but to me, that looks like something like that. There you go, you get a better idea of just how steep it was. Well actually, not how it was, how it still is. Imagine if it rains. Or when it does rain, it must go all the way down there. It must flood down here. I'd love to see that. Honestly, I think it'd just be a really cool sight to see all the rain just gushing down here like a big waterfall straight into the river. Or, I don't really know, it, it, it might even be the sea maybe, I'm not sure. Straight into that body of water down there anyway. From here you can actually see quite a few archipelagos and just some nice sights. It might be a good time of day to come up here, you know. I've just spent the last couple of hours sleeping in this same hotel room um, to catch up. I needed to charge my phone, I needed to charge some other bits as well. So in that time I needed to catch up on a bit of sleep because when I come to these places on a weekend travel, I'm normally waking up about one o'clock in the morning in order to drive to the airport, in order to then catch a flight to then get over here. It can be a very long day, so I just had to catch up on a bit of sleep. So there's a bit of a weird transition between what was daylight and now I've had a couple of hours sleep and now it's completely pitch black outside. So I just wanted this as a bit of a transition, to be honest, between those two uh, day and night shots. Otherwise, it would have been a very weird cut between day and night. Um, with all that said, yeah. Let's um, let's go out and explore a little bit at night. Hopefully we can get some cool pictures or just explore a bit more. Hopefully Oslo is a bit more alive at night. Um, yeah, I feel a bit more energized now as well. I was a bit tired earlier on, essentially because I'd been up for so long. So yeah, let's go and check out Oslo at night and see what the night flight is like. Let's go. Well, come on then. Okay, so I'm gonna head back into the central Oslo area. I think that's where most things are gonna be happening. I think elsewhere, there's just not a lot happening as I saw earlier on today. Just see what's up. This is a really cool, uh, this is a really cool lighting, isn't it? Hey, that's really good. It's actually this building that I'm stood right next to now. Red. Is actually uh, red media as in like the I think the company who do the red cameras red media consulting whatever they're called 
As I said earlier, Oslo is just filled with statues and sculptures and everything I like to do with that type of thing, just things on show everywhere. And I've just come across another interesting piece, I don't know what it is. It's like a big cone made out of like tin foil looking thing. And at the bottom you've got like blue lights going around. Interesting. Again, don't know what it means. But you can walk through the middle of it. At least I think you can. Whatever that is, there it is. It's not even a there's not even a plaque to say what it is. It's just there. Where the hell do the cars come from? Similarly to Stockholm and just Sweden in general, from when I was there a couple years ago, um, it just feels safe here in Oslo to just walk around and do what you want at whatever time you want without anyone disturbing you. If it was other places, for example, London, not so much. But here in Oslo, like, you, I don't know, it just feels a lot safer and I don't know if that's because of the lack of people that's like not here, but I'm not sure because there's again so much space for you to just do what you want but it just feels safe, it feels like everyone just walks past you and they let you get on with your day, they probably say hello, they're very, very polite people um, yeah but they don't really get in your way, they don't like hustle you, they don't get in your face or anything, they just let you do what you want to do I quite like that so far Scandinavia I've been two out of I think it's five countries or six or something I've been two out of that many uh, so far Scandinavia is just a great area in the world to go to just feel so safe obviously I've still yet to go to like Iceland and Finland and wherever but yeah so far I love Scandinavia freezing cold every time I've been it's been pretty cold but very nice people very polite um, you know, and it's just very safe as well. You know, I enjoy that. It's nice to just walk down the street and just enjoy yourself and not have to worry about being mugged or whatever else it might be that you're worrying about. So far at night, everywhere that I've seen is closed. Apart from bars and restaurants, stuff like that, but your average shop, closed. Which is to be expected. It's like that on a normal day, like anywhere in the world. Everywhere is closed, but I want to try and find somewhere cool, maybe a rooftop bar like I did in Milan or I don't know, just something. Um, I'm actually walking back towards that opera house I was at earlier on just to see if it's um, lit up or there's anything cool about it. Just have a look really and then we'll just carry on from there. There's loads more of this area that I need to see anyway. So at the moment I'm taking the same route going down but I'm taking all like, the back passages and stuff because again it feels pretty safe to do so, there's not people hanging around there like who's looking a bit shady, who looks like they want to like take your stuff so I've just been taught taking the scenic route a little bit to come down here I'm almost back at the opera house I know you probably can't see it right now but you have the water which is just here and obviously the barrier which is here and then obviously the walkway there is nothing stopping people from tripping on this into the water and it's huge there is oh i mean i think it leads into the sea i wonder if anyone or how many people actually trip in there on a yearly basis i'm actually quite uh, nervous to step near the edge because of which i think i'm going to stay away from the edge i've also put my hood up because it is it's hard to portray in this video but it is absolutely baltic the winds are picking up and it's just getting really really cold I don't think being next to the sea helps and just like that two seconds on a nap and now I've got a scooter and I'm going to be riding around hopefully to find some other areas I'm trying to vlog right now while riding a scooter. I don't want to go any faster because these are super fast, one-handed. These are ridiculously hard to control. But they're so much fun.
Just dropped my scooter off just there. Seems like you can drop him off anywhere in the city because I've literally seen him dotted all around the place. Dead opposite where I've just dropped it off. Looks to be a rooftop bar. I don't know if I want to go 13 or 14. My only option is 13 or 14. Here we go. I don't really know what way to look out of, to be honest. If you look this way, you can walk up the stairs all the way to the top, or you can take this left. Yeah. I have no idea what to expect. I just saw this place and thought it'd be really cool to get another like rooftop bar place just to check out basically. I think hopefully it'll be good. I hope so. These stairs literally go all the way up. That's crazy. No way would you walk that. Well, sat here, nice comfy chairs, got myself a drink, it's all good. We've even got a good view way out there. Back in the hotel room, this is the end of the day essentially. I obviously, as you can see, went out, hired the scooter like I did in Alicante, but here was more fun because the scooter actually reached 30 miles an hour. Um, so I rode that for a bit. Overall, the cost weren't too bad. If I get the cost up for you and show you, um, how much I paid per time I used them. I think it worked out a bit more expensive than other public transports. Um, if I have a look now, I should be able to find out the prices. So the first time I used it, it cost me 79 Norwegian kroner. Second time I used it, it was 43 kroner. And the third time I used it was 31 kroner. It was about 11.25 kroner to the pound, which then works it out to be about five to nine pound per use depending on which number you were looking at there essentially you would get 79 or 43 or 31 and divide it by 11.25 and there's how much it would cost in the british pound weren't too much essentially you have uh i think like a 30 i can't remember the exact number now you have to pay a certain amount of krona to unlock the bike and then every minute you're essentially paying about 30 cents or 30 pence towards the usage of that bike until i don't know 20 minutes is up and then yeah, about 20 minutes worth of using it, I paid about £9, so that was about as much as that. It's a bit expensive if you look at it as 20 minutes. If you looked at it in an hour, um, what are your times? Nine by three, so that'd be about £27 to £30 that you'd be paying per hour to use those electric scooters. It's a bit more expensive than if you were to get a tram or something, but I really enjoy doing things like electric scooters and bicycles to explore a city because you get to explore the city on your own. And you get to get off wherever you like and these are super convenient because you can literally drop them off wherever you like you do get them a bit cheaper if you drop them off within certain zones there's a black zone and a red zone i think uh i can't remember which way around it is in a black zone you cannot drop it off at all in a red zone you can get like 50 cents off or maybe that's the other way around i can't remember but one of the zones you drop it off in and you can get it a bit cheaper because it's like a like the correct zone to leave it in the other zone you're not allowed to leave the bikes in at all um, i'm not sure if they charge you more for that maybe if you're just leaving it in that zone but that's essentially how it works the app is called uh c i r c so like this circ and it literally opens up like a google maps thing and you you can have a look and there's pictures of bikes everywhere Essentially, what you have to do is walk over to a scooter, scan the barcode, you're good to go. It's very convenient, and um, yeah, if you ever get the chance to, I would really recommend it. They're super fun to use. Um, yeah, so anyway, I stopped off, went into this Sky Lounge bar. I only had one drink because they're 149 krona, which is about 13.50 uh, in British pounds. Which is about standard, probably a bit expensive for a cocktail. I only wanted the one because... You know, if you have two or three or whatever, then it just racks up the price quite a lot. 
I only wanted to go up there realistically to try and see how the view was. The view was okay. Um, could have been better, at least from where I was sat. I think it was better from other uh, seats, but the seats were taken up, so I had to sit where obviously it was free. So the view was good, but it could have been better. Uh, but it was still a nice place to go. I enjoyed the fact that I went up there as opposed to, I don't know, just looking around that opera house again because I'd seen that already. Um, yeah, that's basically it for this ex night exploration that I did tonight. Just literally racing around on the scooter. I had food at a place called Max, which is a fast food chain, at least here in um, Norway. I don't know if it's anywhere else within Europe. I've never seen it before. So Max, it's literally just called Max. They do burgers and fries and halloumi and essentially like any other fast food place, burgers and whatever. So that was pretty tasty, a bit expensive again. That cost me about 20 pounds. Like just over, uh, it was about 210 kroner, I think. So yeah, like everything here seems to be a bit expensive, but then there are a lot of things that are completely free. For example, that opera house that I went up earlier on, that was really steep and I went up to the top and whatever I was talking about, it being flooded and gushing down. That whole thing was free. I didn't go inside the building. I just went up like the top of it, up like I guess along the roof of the building. Um, at least walking up there and having a look and the view of the city and where I was there, um, that was completely free. Like you don't have to pay to go up there, which is really good. And I'm really sure that other places in Oslo is the same as well, where like things similar to that are just free. You don't really have to pay for many attractions here. But when you do pay for things like food, travel, um, whatever it might be, it's a bit more expensive than like your average European city. That's to be expected, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Iceland, Denmark, they're all the Scandinavian countries and they are known for being uh, a bit more expensive. At least in my point of view, the way I see Scandinavia is it's expensive, but they have a good way of living. They're quite healthy people. They don't eat as a lot of, a lot of sugar. Even when they have like a bar of chocolate like this, their sugar content tends to be a lot lower than what it is in the UK and what it is in the rest of the world. Um, sh like drinks again, like if you have a smoothie in the UK, it'll be very high in sugar. In the US, I think it'd be even higher in sugar. Here in the, um, Scandinavia, sugar tends to be quite low in general in everything. So they're like some of the main things that I think about when I think in my head about Scandinavia or Norway or any of these Scandinavian countries. Another thing I think about these countries is that it's always cold and so far my second time in Scandinavia and it's the second time it's been cold. Actually when I was in Sweden it wasn't too bad but there were still days where it was pretty cold but I did definitely have some nice sunny days where I could wear my shorts as well so it was quite a nice mix but when I went to Sweden it was a few years ago it was in August so it was a nice time of year whereas now obviously it's January it's during the winter in like Norway, like it's going to be cold. I'm surprised actually during, in the city center, it's only frost and there's not snow anywhere. When we were landing in the plane this morning, there was snow on um, trees and on mountains and it was a really nice view, but I wasn't in the window seat so I couldn't like get any video or anything. And besides from that, trying to get a video from an airplane is really not easy. It just looks crap basically, so. Yeah, but I mean, it was a really cool view in Norway. It's just a very beautiful country. Um, but I think it's way more beautiful outside the city. If I ever come back to Norway, I would love to go back to like somewhere else. I would love to go to the north of Norway. I would love to go to Svalbard and Tromsø. I think that's how you say them both. Basically, both in the very north of uh, Norway. Tromsø, however you say it, it's got the O with the line through, so it's not an English character. So... Apologies if I don't say it correctly, but that place is in the very north of Norway, where Svalbard is actually a different island, more north, um, and it's essentially like a big iceberg by the looks of it. I've never been there, so I don't know, but it looks like it's a big iceberg, or at least like always layered in snow. I think somewhere like that would be a really interesting place to visit, one, because of the Aurora Borealis, aka the Northern Lights, uh, two, just because it'd be an amazing like place to go. I just think that those sort of places will be a lot more scenic. There'll be a lot more like nature looking. Um, yeah, there'll be places that I would like to go, but obviously um, 
there's quite a few places that I've seen before in Norway as well, like the Norway Route 66, if you will, or like the world's most scenic route, um, you know, things like that. So, yeah, if I ever come out of Norway, I definitely have to like to explore other areas. Oslo has been great, but I've now done it. Uh, I've experienced, you know, I wouldn't say all of Oslo, but all means like you can't experience an entire city in a day. But I've experienced quite a quite a good chunk of it, I would say. It's nice for what it is, and I, if I had a chance, I'd come back. But I would definitely like to explore more of Norway, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead, leave it a like rating. Subscribe to this channel for more vlogs. And with all that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch all of you in the next one. Until next time, thank you so much, and catch you next time. Peace out.